Okay, so first of all, what's a system? What does the phrase system mean? We have a lot of systems. We have a political system. We have an academic system. We have a financial system. What's a system? Kind of. Okay, so how many things make up a system? More than one. So if you have a computer system, that's your monitor, that's your CPU, that's your keyboard, that's your mouse, that's your speakers, right? Versus a tablet. You never hear anybody say, oh, I have a tablet system, right? Because tablet is all in one. But you have a computer system or an operating system where it's multiple pieces that operate together. So for us, a system of equations, where is it? There it is. All right, consists of two or more equations. Whee! Containing the same variables, okay? So um, for us, a system of two equations will consist of two variables, namely x and y. A system of three equations will contain either two variables or three variables, right? It cannot contain more variables than the number of equations it has, right? So, like, if you have five equations, you cannot have six variables because there's no way to solve them. You can only solve one variable per equation. But you could have five equations with two variables, right, y and x, and we can graph them all. And It is important to remember that they have to contain the same variables, okay, in some degree. So just make sure that you understand what they mean by a system of equations. So when you see that phrase, you need to understand you're going to be working with more than one equation at a time, and they're going to have x, y's, or x, y, and z. All right, those are the uh, variables that we're going to be playing with. Everybody okay with that? Yeah? So what does it mean to be a solution to the system? So, like, how many parts does the this, does this system have? More than one, right? So it can have two or it can have, like, 5,000, right? And if you look at, like, our educational system, how many schools are there in the state of Michigan? Yeah, there's, like, over 1,200 school districts. So you got to figure there's over 1,200 high schools alone, let alone the middle schools and all the elementaries, right? So people talk about, oh, well, why doesn't the state just do this? Because... In order for it to be a solution to the system, how many parts does it have to work for? All of them. So this is any ordered set that will satisfy every part of a given system. Three variables implies that the solution will have three values. So if you have an X, a Y, and a Z, you need to find an X, a Y, and a Z that makes the first statement true, the second statement true, and the third statement true. So every part of the system must be satisfied in order for there to be a solution. For example, if we were looking at changing things at the high schools, right, the state of Michigan should blah, blah, blah. In order for it to be a true solution to this system, it has to work in every single high school in the entire state. Okay, everybody all right with that? So in order to be a solution, you must satisfy every part of the given system. All right, so that means every equation you have to be able to put in and get out true answers. Or sorry, put in your solution and get out true answers. Okay? Once we actually start working with this, it'll make more sense, I promise you. All right, so everybody okay with the two big key ideas here, right? So we have a system of equations, which is just more than one equation that we're working with simultaneously. And then a solution to the system is an ordered pair that will satisfy every part of the system. So when it comes to solutions, right, there's three options. Does anybody remember what those are from last year? What are the three options for solution types for our lines? If you have two lines, what are the three different options for the number of solutions they can have? So we can have one solution, right? And what does it mean to be one solution? Well, remember, in order for there to be a solution, it has to satisfy both parts of the system. And what that really means is that the two lines have to intersect. They have to coexist, right? where it's a solution to the green line, which means that it's on the green line, and there's a solution to the red line. Everybody okay with that? So how many places is one of the points of the red line the same as the point of the green line? Right here where the two lines are intersecting, right? So the number of solutions when it comes to solving a system graphically really means how many times are the lines intersecting? Okay, how many times do they coexist? Yes, that's what the arrowheads are for. So forever, they only cross one time, and that's right at this point. Okay, now we have the option for no solutions. How many times do the lines cross? Never cross. So what kind of lines never cross? So this really means parallel. And who remembers? What's the key to parallel lines? Their slopes are what? The same. So if you have two equations, 
that have the same slope, how many solutions is that system going to have? Zero. Everybody good, yes or no? Okay, what causes lines to crisscross? So these are skew lines, right? What causes lines to cross when they're slopes or what? Well, that's when they sp cross special, right? The key here is that the slopes are not the same. If the slopes are different at all, they will always cross at least one time because they're growing at different rates. Okay, so this is going to be different slopes. So if the slope is different, it'll be one solution. If the slopes are the same, it'll be no solutions. Is everybody okay with that, yes or no? So there's going to be a little bit of analyzing going on in here. Is everybody okay with one solution and no solution? So there's going to be two ways of doing this if you haven't figured out. There's the graphical approach, right, where you can ask yourself, what does the picture look like? And then there's the analytical approach where you look at it and go, okay, what, what's going on from a structure standpoint? So because I'm an analytical person, I will personally be able to determine the number of solutions before we even graph it. Some of you, you'll have to think about the lines and try to paint the picture in your head. So there's two ways to approach this. Both of them are right. Neither one's better than the other. It's just whatever fits your style. So I'm going to be presenting information to you in both ways. So if you get what I say at first, cool. If not, wait until I back it up and then see if that makes more sense. Okay, and, and if neither one makes sense, make sure we get the help we need. All right, so here's infinitely many number of solutions. Now, what do you notice about the two lines? They're what? How many times do they intersect? Forever, right? So the phrase here is called coexistent. They're really what? The exact same line, right? So for this one, what do we know about the slopes? Slope is the same, right? And what's the other thing that we use when we graph? Right, so the B is the same. Everybody okay with that? So if the slopes don't match, you have one solution. If the slopes are equal but B is different, then you have no solutions where the lines are parallel. And if the slopes are the same and B is the same, then you have an infinitely many number of solutions, which means that the lines are coexistent. Yeah, whichever you want, either the analytical or the graphical. I don't care. Just be right. So if I asked you to solve the system graphically, what that means is we have to graph both equations, right? So when I graph, which format do you think I'm going to be using? Uh, y equals mx plus b. So what do I have to isolate here? The y. Uh, let me see if I have this set up right. Yes, I do. Okay. So what we do is we split apart the system, and we're going to solve for y on each equation, right? So we are basically going to graph each line separately, but on the same coordinate plane, and then analyze. Everybody okay? So how do I get y by itself here? Subtract 2, x. So y equals 1 minus 2x. Everybody good with that, yes or no? So what's the m? Negative what? Negative 2 over 1, and what's the b? Everybody okay with that? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. Over here, what do I have to do to get y by itself on the right? Subtract the 4x. Divide by a negative 3. So I have to divide everything by negative 3. These cancel. Y equals negative 8 over 3. Can that reduce? No. And what's a negative divided by a negative? Okay, can 4 over 3 reduce? No. So M equals 4 over 3. B equals negative 8 over 3. So everybody okay with how to solve for Y, right? It's like we've been doing for the last two chapters, right? Like I said, this, the, the math up here shouldn't be really hard. We're just combining things we've been working on for the last two chapters. It's just that the processes are going to take you a while. Okay, this is not quick work. This is mundane work. Okay? So, take a look at the slopes. Do the slopes match or are they different? They're different. So, how many solutions should we have? One. So, I can already look up here and go, ah, we're going to have one solution. Okay, but do I have any idea where that solution is yet? No, that's why I want to graph them. Everybody good with that? Yes? All right. So uh, which line do you, should we graph first? Okay, so the first one, right? So where's my B? 1, and what's my slope? Down 2 over 1. So let me get my line. Let me pick the right color. Okay. So we're going to start at 1, 
right? Go down to over one. So here are my two points. Two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. So there's my line. Everybody okay with how I got that? Yes, no, maybe. All right, so are there any questions on where that came out of? So this is this equation right here. So when they ask you to graph them, you're going to isolate Y in each part of the system, and then you're going to graph each part of the system on the same graph. Okay, so over here I isolated Y, found M and B, right? And then I came over to my graph. I started off at 1 on B, went down to over 1, connected my dots, and drew my line. Everybody good with that? Yes? So the other equation, where do I start? What's my B? Negative 8 over 3, which is negative 2 and a third, right? Or sorry, negative 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, and then what's my slope? 4 over 3. So I start off at negative 2, 1, 2, and 2 thirds, which is 2.6, negative, right? And then I go up 3 and over 4 from here. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Everybody good with that? Yes, no, maybe. Right, which is what we expected, right? Because their slopes were different. So I expect one solution, which now I can say, yeah, we've actually got that. So here's my system, and where does it look like they're crossing at? Right here, right? Can anybody approximate the coordinates for me? Well, we need the x coordinate first, right? So it's, I'd, I'd say it's around two thirds. And then it's y is one, two, like negative two and a third or two and a quarter, somewhere in there, right? Again, is that perfect? No, but can I check it and see if I'm right? Yes, because in order for this to be a solution, I have to be able to plug it into both of these equations and have it come out with true answers. Okay, so whatever I put in here, I have to be able to get out a one. And whatever I put in here, I have to be able to get out an eight on the left. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, no? All right. So they ask you to verify your solution. That's what they're talking about. Okay, so now we have four other classifications. So we can classify a system based off of its number of solutions, and then we have these four specific terms. All right, so what does it mean to be consistent? Always or steady, right? So for us, the system has at least one solution is what it means to be consistent. Okay, if you think of it in a different term, that really means we can actually solve the system. Okay, so if consistent means the system has at least one solution, what do you think inconsistent means? No solutions. So a, a consistent system is at least one solution, inconsistent is no solutions. Independent means that the system has exactly one solution. So that means that if we have a system that has exactly one solution, it's considered an independent, consistent system. Actually, a consistent, independent system. Everybody all right with that? Yes, no, maybe? All right, so what do you think dependent means? If the system has exactly one solution, is independent, and consistent means that it has at least one solution, right? What's the other option? Right. So dependent systems are systems that have an infinitely many number of solutions. So we'll call those consistent, dependent. All right, so you basically have three types of classification, right? Which makes sense because we have three different line types. We have one solution, no solution, infinitely many. If we have one solution, it's considered a consistent, independent system. If we have no solution, it's just considered an inconsistent system. Uh, if the system has an infinitely many number of solutions, it's considered a consistent, dependent system. Everybody okay with that? Yes, no? Yeah, so I know there's a lot of terminology coming out. So get it written down. We'll work with it a little bit. The videos will be up tonight, so if you take a look at the homework tonight or tomorrow, the lecture is there. Okay, so it'll be on YouTube and it'll be on Lunchbox. So, classify the following system. So, in order to classify, we have to really figure out how many solutions we have, right? So, what do we have to isolate in order to find out our comparison pieces? Our Y, right? So, I'm going to take the first equation here, and I'm going to solve for Y. So, how do I get Y by itself? Yeah, so walk me through it again. Subtract the 4x and then divide by negative 3. Okay, since I already did this one by hand and you guys took notes, you should have it, I'm going to show you the shortcut. If your brain is up for it, 
We know we're subtracting this piece and dividing by this, right? So what's a negative divided by a negative? So I know I'm going to have this x term divided by that coefficient. So I'm going to have 4x over 3. And I know it's going to be a positive because I know that I have to do the opposite of this and then whatever this says. So it's a negative over a negative, right? And then I'm going to take the piece from the right and divide it by the coefficient on y. So what's positive 8 divided by negative 3? Negative 8 over 3 and y is isolated. So if you can do these right, you can do them without showing any work. So here, how do you get y by itself? You just subtract the 2x, right? Everybody good? Yes, no, maybe. So this is a one-stepper. And again, if you can do them accurately, don't worry about the work. You're getting to the point to where I'm going to start trusting your algebra. Okay? Just make sure that you can back it up and identify everything properly. So for the first equation here, what's m equal to? 4 over 3, and what's the b? Negative 8 over 3. Over here, what's my m? Negative 2, and what's the b? 1, right? So remember, m is always attached to what piece? The x, right? So everybody okay with identifying m and b out of these two equations? All right, so what do we know about the M's? Are they the same or are they different? So how many solutions do I expect? One. So if we call a system, or sorry, what do we call a system with exactly one solution? So is it consistent or inconsistent? Consistent, and then is it independent or dependent? Independent. So a classification will be consistent, independent. Everybody okay with the terminology? All right, and that's it. So what you're going to be working on is graphing a system of equations, identifying number of solutions, and then classifying. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. So you're going to need graph paper, right, when you're working on this on Wednesday in class. If you don't use graph paper, you need to make darn sure you're using a scale properly, everything is marked off, and everything is done properly okay if you don't use graph paper the concern is that if your x and y scales are not correct you might not get the right solutions all right so what i will tell you is you don't have to but from the last three years using graph paper makes this section easier it guarantees accuracy and makes it more likely that you will actually get the right answers for the solutions to the system everybody okay